in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you tonight. Thank you. Lord. For this wonderful opportunity given to us to come before you. Thank you. Father, we thank you for the protection that we have received today. We have gone to different places, to our places of work. Father, we thank you because you brought us back home safely. We thank you for joining mercy today. Thank we you. thank you for provision thank that you have made available to us today. Thank we thank you for gift of life. We thank you for good at O oh Lord. Thank Father, we thank you for sun mind. Thank we thank you on behalf of our loved ones and our family. Thank you, we thank you on behalf of every member of this ministry. Thank you, Father, we say thank you. Thank you because Jesus. you have not forgotten us in any way. Yes, Father, we thank you for your grace that is still working in our lives. Thank you. Father, we give you all the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Accept our thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you for a time like this yes, that you have Lord. given to us to come together to study your word. Yes, Father, Lord. we pray for your wisdom tonight. Amen. Father, we pray for your grace tonight. Amen. We pray for the lead of your Holy Spirit tonight. Amen. Father, lead us in the name of Jesus. Amen. We want to see you in our meeting tonight. Yes, Father, walk in our midst in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come and do only what you can do in our midst tonight. Amen. We want to see you in a new dimension, O oh Lord. Mm -hmm. Father, we want to see you in the light of revelation. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we pray, let the, your light shine upon us tonight. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Reveal more of yourself to us through your word tonight. Yes. And at the end of this meeting, Father, give us the grace to celebrate your name. Mm -hmm. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, once again, we commit this meeting to your hands. Yes. Holy Spirit, come and lead us. Mm -hmm. Come and teach us tonight. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus. Everyone that we partake, those that are in the sanctuary, and those that we connect to us from social media platform, Father, I pray that you will touch every heart tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, we Lord. bless your name, O oh Lord. Yes, in Lord. Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you tonight, if you are joining us for this Bible study. Maybe this is the first time uh, you're going to connect with us. This is God's Barrow's Prayer Ministry International, Chicago, Illinois. And this is our weekly Bible study where we are digging deep to the word of the Lord to understand uh, the promises of God, to understand the mind of God, and to understand what God is expecting from every one of us through his word. And I pray we shall receive more of the revelation tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, we concluded a topic last week which we titled uh, The Evidence of True Conversion. I don't want to believe that God has spoke to us in different ways and that teaching has blessed us and I pray that we God will give us the grace uh, to make use of every uh, lesson we learned from that study. Today we are starting a new uh, a new subject which I believe the Holy Spirit is going to use to bless us again in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 So the topic we're going to start uh, teaching or studying from today is what I titled The Major Causes of Backsliding in Christians. Why do Christians backslide? Uh, that word is common among good Christians. Oh, I just backslided. Uh, I just did this, uh, you know, I missed the mark. So what is the meaning of backsliding? Then why do people backslid? Hallelujah. What is the meaning of backsliding? And why do people, or what are the causes of backsliding among we Christians? Amen. 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 Uh, in Bible, there are a group of people or different characters that we, we, we can say that they backslide and from their, from their life we can probably give a common uh, acceptable explanation of what backsliding is all about. Why do people, I mean, what is the meaning of backsliding? Amen. 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 So uh, maybe somebody we would like to share, maybe mama can help us to share what do we understand by the word backsliding? Backsliding. What does that mean? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Backsliding is a process when one begins 
to walk outside the will of God. Amen. When someone is walk outside the will of God, that is correct. Uh, in, a, in a simple time, we can always also say, it's at a point when a Christian fall from grace or abandon their Christian faith. When someone fall, fall from the grace or when a Christian abandon their Christian faith. Amen. 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 And uh, there are so many things can, that can lead a Christian to fall from grace. There are so many things that can cause a, cause a Christian to walk outside the will of God. Amen. Amen. A lot of things can happen that can make a Christian to abandon their faith. Whenever you see yourself that it's like you are falling from grace or you are falling from the biblical standard, you know that you are backsliding. Amen. Amen. Of course, we can give so many reasons. We can defend ourselves, which they call defense mechanism. Because there's no man or no woman that is doing anything wrong that will not know that what he or she is doing is wrong. But it's wanting to identify and agree that what you are doing is wrong is another thing to hold up to that responsibility. A lot of people, in order to discount or to share blame, they will give excuse. They will give excuse. And whenever you see yourself giving excuse to defend yourself for doing what is wrong, hallelujah, hallelujah. Such people, they are in a terrible situation whereby even this conscience to repent, they may not have it. Because you are already justifying yourself that what you did is right. Hasn't changed this place. Hallelujah. Memories here. You are already justifying yourself that what you back. did, New there's a reason why you did it, therefore you can be blamed. And that is why uh, backsliding is a common phenomenon among we Christians today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that is why we don't even take it so serious anymore. We don't count it as something serious anymore. As a matter of fact, a lot of people, they are Jump, joining the bad wagon of backsliding today. They see people doing something bad in Christian body and they know fully well that this person is no more under grace. This person has fallen from grace. This person is not living according to the expectation of God anymore. But they will join to do the same thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because they believe in the excuse that the person gave for doing whatever they are doing. They too, they believe in that excuse. So, so they join. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They will tell you, oh, things are difficult. Man must work. Hallelujah. Man must work. Man must survive. God too, we understand that after all, I have to, you know, I have to survive. I have to do something. Amen. 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 They will tell you millions of people that have done the same thing. And God didn't kill them. And that's the reason why they want to do it. So, in the course of this teaching, we want to see the causes or the reasons why people backslid. Hallelujah. And I pray that by the time we begin to go, go through all these reasons, maybe as a believer, we, need to be, we have to be watchful. It's going to be a, 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 a kind of wake-up cause. To every one of us, every one of us, so that when you see yourself doing that thing or in the process of engaging yourself in that process, you will know that you are already missing the mark. No matter the highs you are using to look at it, no matter the way you evaluate it, you don't have to deceive yourself. You will know that you are already at the part of backsliding or you are already in the middle. Amen. The first thing we are going to talk about why people backslid. Number one is carelessness. Carelessness. A lot of people know that they want to do it intentionally. But they are so much careless. They are, 
negligence in protecting their faith. In guiding the position by which God has put them. Let's open our Bible to the book of 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10. We are reading from verse 10 to 12. First Corinthians chapter 10, verses 10 to 12. I read, Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for admonition. That is, they are written for our example. They, are, they, they were written so that we can learn from it. Hallelujah. Upon whom the end of this world are come. First 20, first 12 now says, Wherefore, let him that take care of his standard, take it, lest he falls. Hallelujah. Carelessness. Bible is telling us that by ordinary murmuring, some people, they don't know that they're already backsliding, even by murmuring. How many people murmur in the church today? We have a lot of people that murmur over everything in the church today. But probably out of carelessness, out of ignorance, they don't even know that doing that, they're already backsliding. You, we murmur against the word of God. We murmur against reproof by the man of God. We murmur against instructions. Hallelujah. We murmur even when we believe that we are serving God. In the course of serving God, we are murmuring. And while you are doing that, Bible say, the Bible says that you are already backsliding. And that is why I say, he that believe is stand, let him take it, least he falls. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Least he falls. Apostle Paul was telling us this. If we allow carelessness in our life, Satan can take advantage. Satan will take advantage of our carelessness. There are a lot of people that not intentionally, they want to do what actually what they did. Amen. Amen. There are a lot of men, they don't want to cheat on their wife. Some women, they don't want to cheat on their husband. But they, are, they were careless. They, they find themselves where they are not supposed to be found. You go to a place where you are not supposed to go to. And that is why the Bible says, he that stand, let him take it. You think you are very strong spiritually, but you put yourself in a position whereby Satan will tempt you. Or a place that will compromise your faith. It doesn't matter the explanation you are going to give because you have made yourself vulnerable, Satan can take advantage. And probably before you can come out of it, you might see yourself that you have, you have missed your position. At times, it takes the grace of God to be able to withstand such trial at times. When you put yourself in a position where you can be compromised. So let us be careful. Let us avoid being careless be negligence in the course of our faith journey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bible says we should cherish our faith. When you cherish something, you don't become careless about it. There are some things we have at home, maybe a form of decoration that we value so much. Maybe that thing that it costs you a lot of money. Let me tell you, the way you will handle that thing with care we show that you value it. You don't want to see yourself being careless or being negligent about it. We have some provisions in this country today that if you don't have license, you cannot practice. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Like my, in my own case, my own vocation and my own career, I know what, what it took me to get my license, such as nurses too. They know what it costs them to get their nursing license. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
you will discover that you cannot be careless about it. You value your license. You don't want anybody to put you in a position whereby your license can be jeopardized. You, you, you handle it with care. That's exactly the same way that we should handle our faith, our Christian life. But we don't have, most of the time, we don't do that. We are so careless with our faith. And that is why Satan can manipulate some of us. And in the process, we can backslid. We can fall. Because we don't cherish that faith so much. We don't cherish the grace of God upon our life. We don't cherish what God has done for us, that he has called us to be his children. We don't cherish it. If we cherish it very well, you will care about it. You will protect it. We have to hold with all sense of care, with all sense of responsibility, our faith. Amen. 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 If you read verse 11, I mean verse 13, there are no temptation taking you but such as common to man. A lot of us, because we are not that strong and be careful. We are negligent. Every little temptation we fall. Amen. Amen. Every little temptation. Bible did not say that we are not going to be tempted. In the course of our Christian journey, there will come a lot of temptations. Because you know what temptation does? It builds your faith. It makes you become stronger in faith. An example that you cannot pass. You cannot call yourself a fig. Hallelujah. It is when you have passed a test that you, that test becomes a testimony. It is a test that you passed that becomes a testimony. You cannot say I'm a Christian and, and there, is, there are no tests coming away. There are no temptations. There are no trial. How will God even trust you? Something must have happened that we may go to say, I trust this one. He has faced this temptation before. He didn't fall for it. So if such temptation comes again, he will still overcome it. Some of us Christians, we cannot withstand where we're going to be exposed to a lot of money, opportunity to make money. Immediately we fall. This is an opportunity to make money. This is an opportunity to make money. We say, if the Bible says that uh, you know, there's, uh, there's this common saying. It's not in the Bible, but it's, it's popular. Say, blessed is this, that child of God that apply wisdom. Say, blessed is he that apply wisdom. So, they will tell you that they apply wisdom. Even though they know that the step they are about to take or they have taken is not right. But they will say, tell you is wisdom. Hallelujah. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Most people ignore the warning and think that they are invisible. That is an act of carelessness. Some of us, we believe that we are so strong spiritually. Therefore, I cannot fall. I am in invincible. I cannot fall for this. And they compromise their position. Who told you that? You know that this man is not your husband. And the man invited you to an hotel. No matter the kind of meeting, he invited and he's telling you, right, I want you to come by yourself. I don't want, to come, I don't want you to come with, with, with anyone, no company. Come by yourself. And when you get there, it is not in the common room where a lot of people are sitting down. He said, let's go to the room. I have, I, I, I have reserved a room for what? What kind of meeting? Hallelujah. A woman is inviting you as a man. And he says, I'm at home, please. I need to see you urgently. Okay, you are there. And the woman is saying, can we sit down in my room? What happened to the living room? Oh, you are there. And you see that the way the woman dresses is a way that you yourself, you know, it will take extra grace 
for you to overcome such temptation. And instead of you to excuse yourself, you are sitting down. And she's offering you drinks. Don't you mind for drinks? Yeah, yeah, you can bring. And she's telling you, I'm sorry, I don't drink uh, pap. I don't drink water. What I have is just uh, some kind of, uh, 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 what do they call the wine? Or, or a kind of drinks that you know the alcohol. Is what, when it gets to your body, you can become somebody else. And you did not do anything at least to rescue yourself. And that is what the Bible is saying. There is no temptation taking you but such as common to man. But it's not saying, but God is able, faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But with, with that temptation, also make a way to escape. Make a way to escape. It's not saying make a way to survive. Make a way to escape. Hallelujah. But out of your carelessness, you are looking at the woman. And everything is revealing. She put on everything that is revealing. And you think that you are strong spiritually that you are not going to fall. Brethren, you better take it. least you fall. So, most of us, we ignore the warning. We think that we are invisible. We believe that the we, we, the grace of God in our life is above what uh, any temptation can, can attack. There is no an, number, amount of anointing that you can say you have that Satan will still not try you. There is no amount. There is no amount of anointing you say you have. I remember uh, pa, Papa uh, Adeboye shared a, a story. He said there was a time in his life there was this woman that was really after him. To the extent that he went to go and minister in the UK, only God knows how the woman knows that he went to go and, and minister in the UK. And the woman went and even reserved the room that is next to his own room in the hotel. To stay you out, Satan, if Satan wants to bring anyone down. You have to be careful. You cannot afford to be careless. That the woman went ahead and secured a room beside his own room. That after he ministered that night, somebody just knocked the door. Hello? And guess what? The woman is a member of the church. Hallelujah. The woman is a member of the church. After she has tried all the tricks on base, he now took it to foreign base. Hallelujah. <laughs> he went from home to abroad level. Foreign mission. Satan is wicked. Satan will not stop anywhere if you want to bring a man down. If you want to bring a woman down. And that is why as a wife that you love your home so dearly. You cannot be careless about your home. You have to be careful. Don't say I know what I am doing. Yes, you know what you are doing. But Satan may have another bigger plan. That you may not be able to stand. Don't think that you are invincible. That Satan cannot get you. Papa said, as he, he opened the door, the woman showed up. I said, you think you can run away from me? You cannot escape it. You cannot escape it. I must have you. Imagine. The woman who was saying that we both say, I must have you. And the Baba said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. That is extent Satan can go. So, people backslid today as a result of carelessness and negligence. And Bible is warning us that we cannot afford to be careless in everything. It can start Liru, a man that is not your wife, you know that he's always, always looking forward to hug you. You know in the process of hugging, you know that he's just showing uh, just unplatonic passion that, okay, just common greeting. But he takes pleasure in hugging you. And anytime he hugs you, you see the kind of comment that he makes 
or a woman always likes to hug you as a man, and you always listen to the kind of comment, you know that it's like You know that he or she is already lost in after you. You know that she or she enjoys that embracing you because there's something he enjoys about it. And anytime he or she throw up his hand, you're always there to embrace. You better be careful. You know that he likes to touch you in a particular way. And you think he's just being, being nice to you. You better be, care, be careful. Delilah started with rubbing the head of Samson. And from rubbing the head, Samson started putting the head on the laps. More and more. Before, from the laps, started putting the head on the chest. And before you know it, the rest is the history. We all know what happened. And that is how he lost it. The glory that God has given to him. Not only that he lost the glory, he lost his assignment. God gave him a specific assignment for Israelite at that particular time. And he lost it. And he could not even get it back. He, he perished. That will not be our story in the name of Jesus. Amen. Any question? Any question? The second causes of backsliding is what is titled spiritual pride spiritual pride some of us we believe that we have attained a, a certain level of spirituality that even satan uh, satan scare is scared of us let me tell you satan does not scare of anyone if satan can stand before god and be questioning god satan the first temptation Christ faced after 40 days of fasting and prayer, the first person he met was Satan. Who are you? What kind of spiritual? No, we don't even need to, to go far. We have seen a lot of the so-called generous in the body of Christ today that fair just like that. They never thought that what happened to them will ever happen. Spiritual pride. Spiritual pride. Let's open our Bible to the book of John. John chapter 18. John chapter 18. From verse 15 to 27. John chapter 18 from verse 15 to verse 27. I read, And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus unto the palaces of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without. Then went out that other disciples. Hallelujah. But Peter stood at the door without, then went out the other disciple which was known unto the high priest and spake unto her that kept the door and brought in Peter. Then said the dam said that kept the door unto Peter, had, thou, had not thou also one of this man's disciple? He said, I am not. And the servant and officer stood there who had made a fire of coals for it was cold and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed himself. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spoke openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort. And in secret have I said nothing. Verse 21. Why ask thou me? Ask them which had me what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers who stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, 
Answer thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear rest of the evil, but if it were, why smarted thou me? Verse 24. Now Annas has sent him bound unto Sapphires the high priest, and the Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said, Therefore unto him, are thou not that also one of the disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, said, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crowed. Hallelujah. It's a familiar story. We all heard what Peter said when Christ told, first told them that very soon they're going to arrest him and persecute him. Hallelujah. And Peter was boasting that no, we're going to be there with you all the way. No, we will not allow anybody to do such to you. Peter was boasting with pride because he believed that he had some kind of spiritual uh, capability. Hallelujah. But we all saw what happened. Very easy for him to fall. Very, very, a little girl, a little girl asking, are you not one of these disciples? Immediately, he denied. Some of us today, we believe that we have attained certain level of spirituality that even Satan cannot try us. We so much proud ourselves. Though you, by the time I do one day fasting for you, you will know what will happen. Brethren, we have, to be, we have to be careful. Bible says that pride goes before what? Before destruction. Before fall. It doesn't matter the level of spirituality you have attained. But you still need to pray for grace of God to uphold you. You constantly need to pray for grace to uphold you. For the grace of God. Hallelujah. Because we have no any power to uphold ourselves. It is the power of the Holy Ghost that is in us that can only sustain us. If Holy Ghost is removed, we are nothing. We are nobody. So we should not present ourselves or parade ourselves as if we are the one that have the ability to sustain that spirituality that we have. We need to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit every time. There are some battles that the Holy Spirit may not, may not want us to fight. The Holy Spirit may just tell you, walk away. Not because God doesn't have the power to demonstrate over that particular issue. But in God's wisdom, by the lips of the Holy Spirit, He may ask you, walk away. Not that you don't know what to say. Not that you don't know what to do. But probably the best way that the Holy Spirit thought that you can handle that matter is just to walk away and keep quiet. But if you want to show that I am anointed, I have this Holy Spirit working in me, and you want to, you want to be doing things on your own, you might be on your own. You might be on your own. The Holy Spirit might not be there with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is an example that we saw here, the place we just read in the life of Christ. When they were accusing Christ, why don't you defend yourself? Why don't you save yourself? After all, you said that you are the king of Jews. After all, you say you are this, you are the son of God. Why don't you save yourself? Christ said, do you think I don't have the power to command legions of angel to come to come and help me here you think I don't have that power I have it but Christ was following the will of God at that time because he knew he has to go through that process he knew the end result of what is happening hallelujah no wonder he said that I didn't mean the Jewish the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the Sadducees, I didn't mean they knew what they were doing. 
what Satan is using them to do, they wouldn't have done it. If Satan knew that the death of the cross will make Jesus to collect the key from the power of death and it will be the key that will redeem mankind back to God, Satan will never. Christ didn't show that, don't you know who I am? I am a son of God. I am God. I have power to do anything. So, we need to avoid spiritual pride because that can make us to backslide. That can make us to fall from the grace. Amen. Because in that, in that process, even when God is saying stop, out of your pride, you still want to... Have you seen some people where they are, some ministers of God, they are conducting deliverance? And probably by the lead of the Holy Spirit, they have done it to where the Holy Spirit asked them to stop. But they still want to demonstrate how anointed, how much anointed they are. They still want to show some level of power. And they, they are thinking that they want to mesmerize Satan. They want to disgrace Satan. And in the process, the person they are, they, they are conducting deliverance for, get hold of them and naked them. We have seen it. There was a man of God trying to deliver a madman. And the madman was running away from him at the beginning. The madman was avoiding him, running away. And people were there. And the man was trying to show, I am spiritually powerful. I can bind, I can lose. And the madman was running away. But he got to a point. The madman turned back. He beat hell out of this man of God. And people were laughing. Spiritual pride. We need to be careful. We need to be careful. It can lead to backsliding. Hallelujah. And that's why many so-called spiritual exhibition as actually spiritual pride. Spiritual ex exhibition. Like some people, because of the grace of God, that when you move your hand, the Holy Spirit moves and people react. When you move your leg, the Holy Spirit moves and people react. And you now begin to use it as a means of demonstration to show, to show that, oh, how anointed you are. And you begin to demonstrate your leg, demonstrate your hand, and people are falling. You will not know at the point it gets to that God look at you and say, you are proudful. This is pride. Because it's no more giving glory to God. What you are doing is no more giving glory to God. You are now displaying yourself as a powerful man now. You want people to see yourself out of that spiritual exhibition. That, oh, he's an anointed man of God. He's a big, he's a powerful man of God. When he moves his hand, people fall down. When he moves his leg, people fall down. That is what you are now showing. You are not, you are not actually showing the power of God through the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. We need to be careful. Amen. Say so This can lead to disastrous consequence. This can lead to disastrous consequence. If we are fond of displaying how powerful we are, we are. The, the pride, the pride has entered. This can lead to a disastrous consequence. God, as a result of that, can leave the man. God can leave the man. The man may still be able to, you know, do some of all those demonstrations, but it's not, it's, it has become ordinary gift. God is no more in it. Therefore, we have to be careful. Every child of God, whatever we do, is to give glory to God, not to pop off our own pride. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Any question? The third reason why people backslid is the love of this world. The love. I think this is, this is, uh, this concerns every child of God. There are certain things that we do that we will not know that is an, is a display of love for this world than our faith. Even though we are claiming that, oh, 
I'm asking it through the, through the blessing from God. I'm, I'm only asking it from God. But the fact that the way, the way you convert it, the kind of energy that you are putting in the process of acquiring that thing will tell us whether you desire it for the glory of God or because you just love it it's as a result of the love for this world. Some of us, we are guilty of this. Number one, today, I'm sorry, among women, fashion is destroying a lot of women's faith today. Hallelujah. There is no amount of uh, excuse you want to give. Fashion is affecting the whole world today. A lot of our uh, sisters, they are backsliding. Not they are backsliding. They are already moving beyond backsliding. They are already backslided. Hallelujah. Because of what? Because of fashion. What people are doing in the world, the unbelievers, what they are doing, we love it so much that we want to do the same thing too. And we begin to defend it. It, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't take away my faith. It doesn't affect my spirituality. It's a lie. It's a lie. Most especially among women today, we are in the era, in the dispensation now, where women, they, are, they call it bra, braless now. Is that what they call it? They don't wear bra anymore. They say, ah, you have to show your cleavage, you know? You have to show your cleavage. Is that what they call it? Cleavage, yeah. Oh, you, some, some part of your breast must show now. Why do you have to cover up everything? They must see in between. And guess what? Sisters come to the church dressed in the same way. Oh, everything has to be tight so that all the corners, all the cuffs, everything must come out. We must see it. Let's appreciate what God has given to you. And you know it very well. You know it very well. That if you dress this way, it's going to seduce somebody. And that is exactly what you have in mind. You actually dress to seduce men. You, you cannot ask yourself, what kind of spirit that is in you? The love of this world. And a lot of people, they are backsliding for it. Men, their own is money and power. Men, power, money, fame. They love power so much. They will cause themselves Christian. But they love power so much that there's nothing that people in the world, what they are doing to acquire that power, that it will not do the same thing. What the people in the world, what they are doing to acquire money by cutting corners, duping people, scamming people, manipulating people, cheating people. Some men in the body of Christ, they are also doing the same thing because of the love of this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love the world so much. Let's open our Bible to the book of First John. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. I read, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Can we hear that? What are those things that are in the world? F fashion, money, fame, power. Acquiring material things. Those are the things that are in this world. Positions. Positions. Some of us that we call ourselves Christian, we don't have boundary. We don't have boundary about certain position that you say, no, no child of God cannot find, cannot be found in this such position. It's meant for people in the world. But we see in the Christian body today, it is we even, Christian that are even killing ourselves to acquire that position. Love of this world. 
He said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16. For all that is in the, in the world, the lust of the flesh, everything in the world is to satisfy the flesh. I want to acquire all the exotic cars that we see even among ministers of God today. All the latest exotic cars, they want to have it. Oh, other men of God, God, they are buying jet. I must buy one, my own too. Whether you need it or not, whether you can even afford to maintain it or not, they can even tax their church member to contribute money to buy jet. The love of this world. Say, so when you love this thing, the love of the Father is not in you. And it says, and the, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. This is very direct. The lust of the eyes. You want people to see you and, and, and be, be envious of you. So, oh, look at his car. Look at his house. Maybe you cannot even afford to pay the mortgage of that house. But you want everybody to oh, I love your house. You are living in a mansion. Now you want to kill yourself to, to retain the house. You are, not doing two, you are not doing two, three jobs. As I know them. I see them. I meet with them every day. They lose their peace. If they are coupled, they fight every day. People will see them from afar. They are living in a mansion, but there is no peace in the house. Because the husband is working two jobs. The wife is working two jobs so that they will be able to sustain the family, to sustain the mortgage, just to sustain all the car notes, and in the process, they leave their, their children alone to raise themselves. They leave the children alone to raise themselves. And by the time they realize what has happened, the children is already gone. It's too late. But you, that you, you and your husband, you go in the morning and come back home to see each other in the evening. You sleep together to the following morning. You are not happy with that. You are looking at somebody afar. You don't know what is going on in your house. They are living in a mansion. Love of this world is killing a lot of people. I must ride the same car. I must ride the same car. The car you are riding now, maybe you already pay for it. Maybe it's $200 a month car note that is very easy and comfortable for you. But you want to go and carry a car that you'll be paying the car note as if you are paying mortgage. I've seen it. And they pay it two, three years and they become fed up. As a matter of fact, they don't love that car anymore. They don't like the car anymore because the car has become old and they are still paying the same amount. They are still paying the same amount. The love of this world. And that is why a lot of people, they lose their peace. In the process, they lose their head. And eventually, they may lose their life. Because of what? Love of this world. Love of this world. And that, Bible, is, Bible is complete. The Bible is complete. Say, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life. You know that thing is to move off your pride. You want to feed your pride. So that when you come out from that car, they say, oh, he's riding 2022 range. Hmm? She's riding Mercedes-Benz 2023 model. But, they will not thank you, man. Suffering and smiling. Because of that, you cannot sleep. Time you are supposed to be sleeping and resting. You are asking for extra hour. Just because you want to meet up with your expenses. And Bible says it's not of the Father, but it's of this world. Verse 17 has it. And the word passeth away, and all the lust thereof. But he that dwelleth in the will of God. Abide forever. He that dwelleth in the will of God abide forever. Which means 
Those that love the things of the world so much, God is not there with them. And you know what can happen to you. It's part of what we have just said now. You can fall into any time of any kind of temptation. That is why they are stealing. Because they are already living above their income. Their income cannot sustain the kind of lifestyle they are living. I am not against it. If you have money, if it's comfortable for you, live in a mansion. It's the blessing of God. I am not against that. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. If you have the money, it's comfortable for you to ride even your 2030 cars. If they have made it now, buy it. Yeah. It's good to live a good life. Enjoy your life. But don't do it at the expense of your peace. Don't do it at the expense of your faith that will make you to backslide. Don't do that. Don't put yourself under that pressure. Who are you trying to oppress? Because that is the, that is the reason why a lot of people don't do such things. They want to oppress. They want to show. And let me tell you, whatever you have that you want to use to oppress, you can only do it once. If you buy that new car today, and you bring it, everybody says, oh, we love this car. Tomorrow they will not say, ah, this is your new car again. They will, it's the first time. If you wear one clothes today, it doesn't matter how much it costs. It is the first day that you put on that cloth that people will say, oh, look beautiful. If you wear the second, you say, ah, we saw it yesterday. She wore the same thing yesterday. You see yourself? That's why you are killing yourself. That because of that cloth, you almost kill yourself. It's only one day. No matter how much you want to spend for your wedding, it's for one day. They will only talk about it one day. If you like, live the rest of your life paying the debt. It's one day. May God help us in the name of Jesus. I say, may the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the word passeth away, and the lost thereof. But he that doeth the will of God are buried forever. I'm going to stop here tonight with this last scripture. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. Then we're going to pray. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. Hallelujah. It says, For them as has forsaken me, having loved this present world, anyone that lo loved this present world, we eventually forsaken God. And once you uh, find yourself in such position, you are backslidden. You are no more with God. You have gone astray. For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica. Christians to Galatia, Titus unto Damasia. Because they are forsaken. Titus went to where God ordained him to go. Christians went to Galatia. But Demas, because he loved this world so much, he forsaken God because he loved this world. And he has departed unto Thessalonica, where God did not allow him to go. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus backsliding. And what are the causes of backsliding? That is the topic we are, we are treating. I wish that a lot of people, they will pay attention to this teaching because I believe it's going to help us. Every one of us, we are vulnerable. There is no one that will say that, oh, I'm, I'm past that. Because we all have one responsibility or the other. We all have to pay for our bills. And in the, in, in the course of paying for the bills, you may want to compromise your faith. In the process that you want to show that people, for people to know that you are smart, you are okay, you may compromise and you may backslide. 
I pray that may the Lord help us tonight. Every spirit of manipulation that can lead to backsliding, may the Lord separate us from that spirit. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Please join me as I welcome our bishop to the altar. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, let's do this quickly and let's take our offerings first. Quickly, if you are online, uh, let's take our offerings first. Amen. And um, we're going to be praying. Amen. Amen. Um, I believe um, even as well as on Sunday to some to some level. Amen. Next week, I'll take questions on backsliding. Remember, we've been talking about backsliding. Uh, that means a person can relapse into bad habit or sinful lifestyle. The person is a believer, but he, but 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 he has he has he has left his original position. Praise God! He had left his original position. Praise the Lord! And there is what is also called a state of apostasy. Apostasy means is a total desertion of the faith. Does this person confess yesterday that Jesus is Lord? Today he says Jesus is no longer Lord. So that is apostasy. That is a terrible state to be at. Amen. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons people backslide is when you are ashamed of Jesus Christ. Spiritual pride and the love of this world. I pray may you not be carried away with the love of this world. Because it's very easy. A lot of people have been swept right now as we speak. May that not be our story in Jesus' name. Amen. May you finish strong. Say I, will, say, I shall finish strong. I shall finish strong. Yeah, that's a secret. You finish strong. You are there. Praise God. Let's take our offerings tonight. If you are online, please, you can go ahead and give. Uh, you can sell in your offering, your tithe, your seed, faith info.gosbar at gmail.com as I zell hallelujah as you do that God bless you let's lift it up father we release your blessing upon our offerings tonight lord we ask oh god that let the heavens be open for us do for us that we, we, which we cannot do for ourselves in Jesus name amen let the people say amen, amen. let God's people say amen, amen. Now, um, we're going to be praying. Amen. Amen. Please, um, I want to encourage you to always be in the in service. Praise the Lord. Now, God has shown us some certain visions and revelations that it is our responsibility to pray as a church. Hallelujah.